Take as much time. Sorry, I don't think like, this is really important. You trying to slow him down? Take as much time as you need. I know, but I thought I had a gun. All right. No, I didn't know if you knew, but take as much time as you need. But what the fuck? Why don't they just postpone it and do it when it picks up? Right now, you got a 6.2 and a 6.7. Andrea's got a 6.8 and a crash. But I got. Oh, he hasn't done his third yet. No. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Is there mind games in kiting on the water? Uh, to be honest, I, I try not to pay much attention to it because I think the more attention you pay to it, the more it messes with you, especially someone like me that, that overthinks things. So literally, if someone will say something to me before a heat, it will go through one ear and come out the next. I'll not really acknowledge and not really think about it too much. Good luck, bad luck. You've been riding shit before your heat. Oh, is that the right kite size? Like, whatever. It's not gonna change my performance. I'm so focused on me that I don't care about the opponent. You know, maybe watching what someone does could push you even harder to do something better, but I'll never let it push me in a negative way. And do you, do you try and do mind games to the opponent? No. No? No. You're just doing your thing? I think, yeah, there's different kind of athletes that, that do do it. Um, but for me, I'm super, I'm super fair play. I like everything as fair as possible, so yeah. I don't think it's very nice to get into somebody's head. Just let the, the, the guy, let, let everybody do their thing and the best man win. <laughs> Bro, last year I fucked the battery from the car because I was in the car like with the music all, all day long, like bam, bam, bam. And at the end of the day, we went to turn it on the car and the car, the battery was finished, was fuck <laughs> from the music. But you won, so it was okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you had the trophy, you were world champion, but you couldn't drive home. Yeah, yeah. This is the thing, man. Classic, okay, nice. Um, and what, what about your relationship with Liam? You uh, went to Namibia with yeah. him, and this is his uh, yeah. spot. Have you had much to do with him? Have you spoken to him much? Mm, we are just friends, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, we are friends, and that's it, you know. It's yeah. like, yeah, I have no problem with Liam. That's a win. I just, yeah, I just, How was the cat? Talk to me about that event there and your experience. Look up. Next heat up here then, Edgar Ulrich, Cohen van Dijk. How do you say his name properly, Cohen van Dijk? Oh, it's a biggie. And now he's going for the S, Lou. The Dutchies are definitely not holding back covering a whole lot of distance. It's got to be over 100 meters here, Ruben. We can look at 153 meters. Maybe even their eights, and they're switching down right now. So our cameramen have got a lot of work to do now. As Cohen Van Dyke takes to the skies, Whoa. double loop, delayed back roll. We really have kicked off on day two now. This is the heat that I feel it's happened, Ruben. The heat before your heat, you're watching the guys, what sizes are they kiting, um, what should I do, you know, like uh, what does he normally kite when I ride and how high does he fly. So you're really busy with 
thinking what size should I take. Um, and this is a pretty hard thing because you need to focus on what you need to do, not on thinking what you should do. In this heat, then Cullen Van Dyke up against Josu Sam. Josu Sam from Brazil. Mega loop delayed back roll from Josu San. Very inverted, Whoa. so upside down, Ruben. And now taking on Cohen van Dijk from the Netherlands here in the blue rush fast. Not getting the height he needed on that. The lowest double loop we've ever seen. Uh, but he's, he's, uh, he's done well for himself here, uh, Jose San. Coming up through the ranks like that. What has happened there from Cohen? Yeah, so I think what this is really working into the hands of Joe Susan. He's a much smaller guy. Cohen Van Dyke, and he's just. I, I'm so devastated for him. The first heat was awesome, windy. And I, yeah, I like, I like windy heats. And then the second heat was not windy, and I didn't have the right kites ready to fly in. Um, less wind. So that's a bummer, big pity. I was pretty down uh, because of that, <laughs> but um, things happen and um, there's more room to improve for next year. Yeah. Be ready for these kind of uh, challenges. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing that, you know, oh, fuck, I need to go to France again. I don't want to kite there, it's cold, it's gusty, too many people. And that's, that was the mindset I went into yeah. for a competition, you know, but that's not the mindset you can have to go into a competition. Mm -hmm. So... It actually, with Liam, it started in cold Hawaii uh, two years ago as well, where I rode up against him in the semi-final and we had this ridiculous heat with 60 knots and it was just pure survival. Um, and then after that heat, we were pretty close, so I congratulated him. And he said, do you think you could do me a favor? Do you think you could maybe help me with the scores in the final? Like, Man, of course, you know, I'm going to be on the bridge and I'll be shouting at you what to do. And I could see the scores and I was just, he couldn't really hear me. So I was like going like that to show that he had to go for a layback or like that to go for a boogie or like that to go for a board off. So um, when I was giving him tips the first time he won Cold Hawaii and then in Le Cat when he made it to the final, I went to him and was like, man, do you want me to give you your scores and let's let's do a repeat of what we did in, in Denmark? And he's like, man, that would be amazing. Like, that would be sick. So, um, and then it happened again, so we're two for two. So if I'm out, if I go out, which I don't think so, but if I go out and I'm not in the final with him, I'll be doing it again. Uh, at all the competition, I feel like a bit of pressure, but I mean, because it's just from me, you know, I, I not feel the, the, the pressure from the uh, other people, it's just my pressure, you know, because I won't really do well, you know, it's what I love to do and I like win, you know, I not do the competition for just say, oh, I did this competition, I do the competition for win and I make everything possible to try to win, you know, uh, at 100%, so then if it's not happen, I'm a bit angry, you know, yeah. like, yeah. I was quite confident as a as a kid, and I didn't really give a shit what any people anyone thought. I probably give a shit more of a shit now than I did as a kid. I was so focused on winning, winning, winning that you know I would just <laughs> step over anything that got in my way. And if you liked it, good. And if you didn't, well, yeah. move to the side. <laughs> um, so yeah, That's what I had to be there really to get to the top right. Yeah, basically, and I, I didn't even realize I was like that. I was just like that. Um, at what, what point did you realize that you were white like that? Um, you know, when I started traveling by myself 
um, I realized that you know people were starting to put me in my place a bit because I was hanging out with a lot of older people and they wouldn't they basically wouldn't take my shit because I was like a 14 13 year old you know probably super hyperactive doing whatever I wanted and I would end up staying with older people and they would be like this is not okay or they'd like try to bully me a bit but as soon as you start to discover different aspects of your life and you start to question like who you are as a person and all these kind of things, then you start to doubt yourself more in a way, which is weird because you should get more confident as you get older. But uh, yeah, the older I've gotten, the more questions I've asked myself and the more it's affected maybe my mental health or things like this. Is that the peacock? That's the peacock, yeah. The most annoying is when you're like really concentrated about to serve. <laughs> you just throw the ball up and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about this bloody event then. Yeah. It's going to be Tuesday by the looks of it. Yeah. Um, and it's you and Andrea for, for the title this year. Yeah, probably competed him against him about five times in total, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Do you see any of yourself in him when you were that age? A little bit. This is the final, Ruben. It's the big time here. We're in the final. It's the last heat of the weekend. Lots of tension put up for this. Liam Whaley against Andrea Principi. It is the current uh, bigger world champion, Ruben. Who do you think is going to take this? Phenomenal riding. Both of these legends can definitely take it. Whereas Liam has been around competing for longer, so his experience is on his side. But I think uh, Andrea does have a few more tricks in his bag and definitely has the height, style and commitment. So this is get definitely going to be a final to watch and uh, I can't wait to see this unfold. Left foot forwards coming into the box and Andrea Principi finding a nice board spin into uh, that looks like a kite loop. And uh, people are complaining that the wind is too light, but it, this, this is... This is winding me up now, Ruben, yeah. This is what is part of kiteboarding and what you have to deal with in competition. Yeah, 100% here's Liam Whaley, definitely finding the height in a bit of a low in the wind. Tension can be cut on a knife edge here right now, Ruben. Lots of tension on the beach with the crowd, the riders. This the decisions, fight. decisions, the stakes are high at this moment. The stakes are high. For the race director, for the riders. Let's see what the, what the riders are thinking. They are riding the same kite. So uh, that is uh, mostly down to skill. Yes, this is true, Ruben, and I can hear this wind picking up a little bit over the top of our live stream booth now, so maybe there's one more return of this Tram Montana to wrap things up on our final heat of the day. Bro! Take as much time! Sorry, I don't think this is really important. You trying to slow him down? Take as much time as you need. I know, but I thought I had a gun. All right. No, I didn't know if you knew, but take as much time as you need. What the fuck? Why don't they just postpone it you know, when it picks up? Right now you got a 6.2 and a 6.7. Andrea's got a 6.8 and a crash. But I got... Oh, he hasn't done his third yet. No. <sighs> just really wait until you see the caps on the water as well. 
And then I might as well take the six. <laughs> Just wait for it to fucking pump. To Liam, who is now coming in for a kite change. He is on his eight meter at the moment. And I think a seven meter is waiting for him because uh, he knows he can double loop that a little better and it will score well for him. So let's see uh, what, uh, what he's gonna pull out of the bag with that. He's gone out on a set, he's on a seven meter. Okay, so we usually need 30 knots for that, but. The white caps are returning, Ruben. The flags are starting to go here. Here, Liam Whaley finds the gas, gets the height, and goes for the double loop. Liam's come in, changed from uh, an eight to a seven in preparation and anticipation. He felt the wind was going to be strong. That was really uh, a gamble for him. on his sixth trick and he's starting to score biggies. Oh, get it. Look at that height and the angle. Very, very, very nice from Liam Whaley. Let's go! A few clouds passing over the sun now. Andrea Principi being asked questions of Liam Whaley. He's got two in the eight so far as Liam Whaley. Andrea Principi about to perform his sixth. But uh, did Andrea just change his kite as well? He looks is, like it. He is on a different kite, so this is his double loop kite. Yeah, but hopefully the wind stays there for him so that he can perform on this smaller kite, uh, the same height that Liam Whaley already was able to put some doubles on the map, scoring him a well 8.4 and 8.6. Can there be any reply to this? Oh, no, 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 no! I already saw that was not going to turn out well. Unfortunately, Andrea Principi, that is the end of this final heat here. And uh, we can safely say that Liam Whaley is the champion here today at the GKA Kite World Tour Big Air Discipline. Yeah, so this year there was only two stops for the GK Big Air World Championship. Uh, there was potential for a third, but it didn't pan out, so... Yeah, look, I mean, if you won that first one, which Liam Way did, it put you in prime position to, to win a world championship.
But I think somebody that that's from here should win it. So I would want Liam to win it also because it would be the first time anyone's ever won a freestyle World Cup and a bigger World Cup. So I wasn't feeling very nice in my uh, in myself in my skin, and um, <coughs> because there were a lot of things happening, I wanted to progress, and I, I couldn't because of certain things, and I just felt like I needed a change in my life. I didn't know what, I didn't know how, I didn't know when. Uh, I was just not on in on my place, or I wasn't feeling like I was where I needed to be. And uh, at that time, when I started to realize I was feeling like that, Alex sent me a text. And, and I straight away, I, I got this warm feeling inside of me. I'm like, wow, you know, like, Alex wants to talk to me and this can only mean good. Um, so I, I, I already kind of manifested his questions and I manifested right. So um, the moment I got into the chat with Alex, I just said yes straight away because I was in this situation and I wanted to change. I was like, this is what I need to do. I feel like I need to do this. Um, so uh, after a two hours sitting down with a coffee with Alex, I shake his hand straight away and said, yes, we're going to do this. Um, so yes, I look up to a lot of different athletes, um, of course, you know, the greatest of all times, like Michael Jordan or, yeah. you know, Michael Phelps or oh, yeah. even, even people from alternative sports like skateboarding, like oh, yeah. Nigel Houston and Kelly Slater. Um, but then also people from our sports, Aaron Hadlow was probably the reason, um, yeah, basically, the reason I, I started everything and was so, so motivated to progress is because I basically was, I idolized him so much and I was obsessed with his tricks, his style, and, you know, I would, I would miss school some days just to watch his videos. Liam, for instance, was someone I saw growing up and do really well, and, like, maybe some people, I don't know, might be jealous, oh, he's got an amazing car at Porsche. But like for me, like, I'm stoked to see that someone in kiteboarding has made that. He's got an amazing contract. He's got someone following him around filming. He gets to drive like the latest Porsche. Like for sure, like I'm envious. Wish I could, it would have happened at an earlier stage in kiteboarding. But it's also good to see like there's potential there for people now. I could not fit in in school. Like, all I had was kite surfing in my head and you know that I went to this quite posh school at one point and all kids were talking about their parents cars and, and houses and I was like I just couldn't relate to it at all because that's not the kind of upbringing I've had and on top of it I didn't I really didn't and couldn't care less. So your upbringing hasn't been like a materialistic one? Not at all. Okay. Not at all my parents. I think a lot of people get the wrong impression of you because maybe because of the Porsche thing I feel like people give you more shit than they give anyone else and I was just wondering if you'd acknowledge that and you'd felt that. Um, I do feel it but I don't care about it honestly I think I'm just the typical character that people would like to hate on yeah. you know. What were your living conditions like? Were you living in that van? So last year I had a Volkswagen T4 very small van, so it's the one with uh, yeah, the, the normal size you see with fans, uh, and that's very small, <laughs> very, very, very small, like you don't have anything, I just, and I made it myself, I got the van from my dad, and I made the bed myself, it, the bed was broken already when I left, you know, so I did that, it was pretty weird, um, so I, I, uh, I was living in the van for two months and that was pretty harsh, like it was uh, a, a mission. And then uh, I got a house with Mika, I slept there on the couch because uh, obviously I needed a shower and I wanted to make food and at one point I was over it. Um, so my living conditions last year were pretty, uh, pretty hectic, but I chose to put myself in this situation because I like to, you know, see how other things are and I don't like to live 
as a as a rich man and um, don't want to be spoiled with uh, all kinds of things and I rather see that side of living to appreciate the richer side of living more yeah. um, so that was great last year was great and then this year I didn't want to go and rent the house uh, and I needed a new car because that one was pretty old uh, so I bought a new van and this one is bigger it's a, a crafter so like the bigger fans you see and um, it has a kitchen, a big bed, and enough space for my gear, enough space for my speaker. And uh, that, that's nicely living, you know, like you have space. So I could survive for three months in this van now. Yeah, the semi-final between Liam and Kyle was make or break for Liam. I mean, he had to win that. If he wanted to be a world champion, he had to get to that final. That was step one, making the final was step one. Step two was just finishing ahead of Andrea. <laughs> then starting off definitely with a double oh it's lovely that we've been developing. I don't know if he's even flown this before. Oh, and he just bombs out to Liam trying to keep his world title dreams alive here.
how much you double scored? Yeah, that's